What do you do when a brake line breaks? Well, Sam and Dave make a new one. Then Dave is joined by Christine from U-Pole, and she explains Raptor spray on bed liners. Finally, the nuts and bolts of the show. Well, bolts. Sam and Dave are using ARP fastener bolts. All of this and more coming up. Hey, welcome to another edition of Motorhead Garage. Well, folks, you guys out there that have ever done any brake work, somewhere along the line, you've probably had to make up brake lines. That's right, and if you're using steel tubing, whether it's brake lines, fuel lines, or you're using transmission cooler lines, you gotta double flare the steel tubing, or you'll have a leak. Exactly, and here's what we're talking about on a double flare. We got an example right here. What you have to have is a special tool, which Sam's gonna show you in just a minute. But what you do is you flare out your brake line like so, you bring it up and it comes in just a little bit and then you collapse the edge over itself so it folds over. That's called a double flare and this is what they look like. But before you do that, you got to cut your brake line usually. There's several ways you can cut it. You want to get yourself a little cutter like this and once you get it out, then you put it on like so. What it does, it does it'll cut it but it doesn't collapse the, the uh, line on here. Now, once you get it cut, the next step is, is you want to do what Sam's doing. I deburred the inside, I took a little file, and I cut a little chamfer on the outside, a little angle. Then we go over here, and this is a double lap flaring tool. The difference between this and a regular flaring tool, you have your little flaring vise, but you have these adapters. Now, this happens to be this size, we're in a quarter inch tubing. You set this on here and you use it as a gauge, and you bring your tubing up, to the first shoulder, and then you clamp it. Once you have that, you tighten this up. I like to really snug it so the tubing doesn't slide. Now you take your adapter, you put it in the tubing like that. That's your first step. Take your flaring tool, put it on your flaring bar like that. You run this down in here, and then of course, some of these things have a hex on top, we use a socket. This I've had forever. So it's a little bar. Since Hector was a pup, is that when it was? Since before Moby Dick was a minnow, I promise you. <laughs> okay, so our first operation is, we do that. Now you take your adapter out and you can see what I've done. I flared it out and then like this. Second operation is, you take the cone of the flaring tool. You put this down here like that. Get that set up and then we'll do our second step and what we're gonna do is bend that over and lap it over inside, and that'll give you your double wall or your double lap flaring tool. Tighten it down. You don't have to get crazy on it. You don't want to split it. Do that, pull this out of the way. You've got a pretty good looking flare there, and you want to be nice and consistent so it'll seat on the flare seat. And you can see right there, we've got a pretty double lap flare. Now remember, before you go bend in your tubing, put your tubing nuts on, because once the tubing's bent, you're not gonna be able to get the nut on. And this is your flare fitting. That's got a seat inside it. Now that's not a tapered pipe, so you don't need any thread sealer or dope or ribbon on there. The flare will seat and seal against the seat. Once you tighten that up, you're done. Once you've learned how to flare it, of course the other trick is, is if you get a piece of, uh, brake line like this, then you've got to bend it. One of the tricks we've learned is get you a piece of wire, this is this piece of welding rod that you see here, or coat hanger, whatever. Make sure it's kind of straight. This is easy to bend, and what you can do is lay out your line, how you want to run your line on your car or wherever, and then you can bend it, whatever you need, and once you get it set up, then these are the type of tools you might want to use to bend it. If you bend this in the wrong place, it's cheap. You throw it away compared to your tubing. Because once you bend it and kink it, that tubing's done. Exactly. Anyway, that's a good tip for you. We got a lot more coming here on Motorhead Garage, so stick around. This edition of Motorhead Garage, presented by ARP, is being brought to you by BrothersTrucks.com your number one source for 1947 to 87 Chevy and GMC truck restoration. VR12, ultimate cooling system protection. Rev wheels, a revolution. And by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. 
This is all there is, huh? <laughs> Just that. Hey, welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, folks, if you've got a pickup truck and the bed is a little funky back there, it's all scratched up and starting to rust, and you got a free Saturday afternoon, why not put a bed liner in it? And you can do it yourself. It's pretty easy. And we have Christine Decia here from Upole who makes Raptor. And this is a bed liner that you can roll on, brush on, or better yet, you can spray it on. And Christine, you brought some with us. What is the biggest problem people have when they start to do this? What do they run into? The biggest problem that people face um, when they start to apply Raptor is preparation. They just don't prep enough. Mm -hmm. So what you have to do, we did it on the truck bed uh, earlier, and then we also did it today on the tailgate. We first cleaned it off. So you want to get all of the dirt and the debris, any oil that might be on there, you really want to get it off. So give it a good scrubbing. Give it right? a good scrubbing. And then you want to go and you want to sand it. You want to sand it so there's no shiny spots left. Mm -hmm. So start with anything from a one, uh, 120 to a 180 grit paper. Okay, and once you get it sanded, you clean that off, then what do you do? Clean it off again. Blow off all the dust. Um, go in there with another wax and grease remover and wipe it all down. If you did too good of a job sanding and you got down to the bare metal, you want to prep that. So well, a lot of times when you got rust, that's exactly what's going to happen. You have to take it down to the metal. Like exactly. That. So before you spray Raptor, uh, you want to hit it with an etch primer. Mm -hmm. So we recommend our Acid 8 etch primer. Any bare metal spots, you want to give a good coating of that uh, before shooting the bed liner. And also, the bed has a lot of ridges, corners, and it's mm -hmm. difficult to get in there and sand. So to be safe, we always recommend um, an adhesion promoter. So we used our Grip 4 today on the, on the bed, and we sprayed that in the corners and in some of the grooves to really make sure that Raptor would stick. So once you've got the bed prepped, you want to uh, start mixing your Raptor. And mm -hmm. I'm telling you, this is, it's easy. It's as easy as fill, shake, and shoot. So we'll demonstrate here exactly how you mix Raptor. And I see you're putting on your uh, nitrile gloves. Yep. Safety glasses. Got my safety glasses here. Good point. So right. the first thing you're going to do, the kit comes with four bottles and um, one liter of hardener. You're going to remove the lid from the bottle. Get your hardener. Okay, I'll get this out here. And you want to look inside your bottle and put the hardener into the first ridge. Okay. The mistake a lot of people make is that they just don't add enough hardener. And you can see that. I can see where it's going in right now, so uh -huh. not a problem. Okay, it looks like you got it right there. Uh -huh. Okay. Once that's done, Put the cap back on and shake it. You really want to shake it a lot to make sure that you mix it properly and you really agitate and activate the product. So How long should you shake it? Have we recommend two minutes. Okay. If you go more, nothing wrong with that. But shake it for at least a good two minutes. Once that's done, you simply remove the lid and you apply Raptor with an undercoating gun. So we recommend the U-Pull Shoots gun mm -hmm. just because it's made specifically for these bottles. So when you have the gun, you just stick it in there, twist it on, and you're ready to go. All right, Christine, now guys want to spray this. What are some of the techniques they need to know about? So you can customize Raptor in a lot of ways, and a lot of them it is by how you spray it. So you could adjust the PSI. The higher you go, around a 70, the coarser the texture you're going to get. Also, you can alternate the distance that you spray it at. The further away, the uh, coarser texture you're going to get. Mm -hmm. So if you want it smooth, drop the PSI, maybe about 40 or 50, and spray it a little bit closer. Today we're spraying Raptor at a 70 PSI, and we're going about 8 to 12 inches from the surface. Okay, and so that's going to give us a nice texture on that. But you've got to put the base coat on first, so that's what the guys are doing. You want to make sure you wear your safety equipment on that. Got to be safe when you're doing this. So once they have that all done, you see they're doing a nice technique on this thing, spraying it nice and even and taking their time on it. They are. Um, and after the first coat, you want to do another two to three coats and wait about 60 minutes in between coats to really let it flash off. Okay, well, while that's drying, we're going to see what Sam's up to. So while you're watching this process of installing a Raptor bed liner, you can see everybody's really conscious about safety. Christine had on gloves when she was mixing the chemical. When you're doing the sanding for prep, you want to wear a dust respirator or a dust mask, keep that stuff out of your system. When you're actually spraying the product, you want to have a good respirator suitable for paint, spraying paint, or even better yet, a fresh air system. And of course, do it in a well-ventilated area, like our spray booth here has an exhaust system. If you don't have a setup like that, do it outside. Now let's take a look at the finished product. Okay, folks, 
got the truck out of the spray booth, and you can see it's dry already. Now, we got the tailgate back there. It's in the process of being finished right now. But, Christine, you know, you can get this in different colors, too. You can. You can either buy a black kit or you could buy a tintable kit that you can tint to match any color, even white. So whatever your imagination comes up with, and this is a urethane base. Urethane based, um, completely waterproof and UV resistant, so it's not going to fade. No, I'll tell you what, it goes on easy, works out well, and you can see you can get all the different colors. You can even do patterns as well if you want that. If you want more information about it, all you have to do is check out their website. Time now for Brothers Truck Parts Project 72. Restoration tips and techniques for a 1972 Chevy Suburban with Sam and Steve Flanders. Welcome back to our second installment of the Brothers Project 72. But last week we cut out the rusty rocker panel, but we found more rust, need some attention here. Brothers has a couple ways for you to go. What do you got there, Steve? First of all, we have this small piece, fits right here, places the back of the rocker as well as your little step that we have rust in right there. Yep, that's a great way to go, but they also have this other panel. It's a larger panel, and it goes up to the outer floor, so if you have rust out to here, this is a great way to go. If you have more rust, they even have the floor pans. Today we're gonna to cut this out and weld this in. All right, now we've got our inner panel all put in place here and spot welded. Metal's nice and solid and clean here. I've got it tacked in place. So now once we get this on, we'll go ahead and weld it all the way around. Now try not to weld it all at once because you'll drop the metal. A little bit at a time, let it cool, get this welded, we'll be ready for the rocker panel. You can see we've got this all stitched up nice now, welded good, it's in great shape, all new metal, it's structural. You know, they come all prime, but I like to put a little rust preventive paint on there, does a nice job. Now when we take the rocker panel, there's a lip here, it's up against here, so we're gonna take this, we're gonna fit this up here like so. Taking our time, look at this, right on the factory seam, this is really nice fits good. Again, all fresh metal. I'm going to clamp it in place, stitch it, hang the door, make sure that it's nice and level, the line's good, door doesn't touch, then I'll weld it home. Now that's the right way to install a rocker panel and an outer floor. We'll see you next time for another installment of Brothers Project 72. Hey, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we've got a lot more coming here on Motorhead Garage, so stick around. Motorhead Garage, presented by ARP, coming to you from Borla Commerce Park. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, today, Dave and I got a rock crawler here. Pretty popular sport, and this is a big buggy. It's got a big block Chevrolet motor in it, four-wheel drive, powered by propane, and it's got some pretty big tires on it. Not only these tires fool you, there's not a lot of air in these, and if you guys rock crawl, you know. When you get up on the rocks, you lower the pressure on these things, make them pretty soft. If you're working them hard, the tire would want to come off the wheel they got some special wheels. Let Dave and I show you a little bit about what we got over here. You got that part yet, bud? Well, now you're done talking. I can finally get back to work here. There you go. All right. Folks, what we have here is what we call a beadlock wheel. Now, in the old days, you know, the guys had sprint cars, the drag cars. What would happen is they'd run so much low air pressure in their tires, they literally could spin the wheel in the tire, or in like the sprint and midget car guys, they could actually pop the bead right off the wheel. Sure. So what they did is they would go and they drill holes around the rim and screw in like big old sheet metal screws right into the bead of the tire to keep it from flipping. Well, somebody had a great idea, says, let's do something better than that. So they came up with these bead lock wheels, and that's what we have here. You can see the wheel is already set up, and it's pre-drilled and threaded, and instead of the tire bead being looped inside, it lays on the outside. Then you have this piece. Yeah, and what this does, this fits right over the top. Now, you don't normally have to take it off the vehicle to do this, but we did this so you could see it. You want to make sure you let all the air out of the tire first sure. before you do that. Otherwise, you could be in a little bit of a problem there. That's pretty dangerous. Now, we're going to put high-quality ARP bolts back into this thing. That's right. And, you know, this is aluminum, so you want to make sure you start all your bolts by hand and you're gonna to wanna to torque them properly, so to get good consistent torque for good clamp load, to clamp that bead between the wheel and this cover, 
you want to make sure you put some good assembly lube on exactly. it. Exactly, and this is what we're using right here. This is ARP, it's ultra torque lube. You don't have to use a lot on there, but just a little bit on the threads. And the reason for that is because you want to have consistent torque around there. Of course, we've talked about torque before, but one thing people have to understand about torque, it's nothing more than the actual measurement of the stretch of a bolt. Now, we don't have a stretch gauge for this, but what you can use is a good torque wrench. You want to make sure it's calibrated. But you can see this is what these bolts look like. These are nice polished stainless steel ARP bolts. These are the things that really dress this up. It's not only dress up, these are strong. 170,000 PSI tensile strength. And if you notice the old bolts we took out that came with this wheel, they had washers under them, especially if you're in dirt. You drop a washer, you're chasing it. If you look closely at this ARP bolt, it has a great flange on it. You're not gonna have to deal with a washer. And of course, as you put your ultra torque lube on here, a little bit under the head, so it acts like a barren surface where it goes onto the wheel. That does a great job. That way you can get a good, even torque. And when it comes to torquing them, of course, use a crisscross pattern, get them nice and even, and torque them in stages. What do we got, about 25 foot-pounds? Yeah, 25 foot-pounds on this, and then we'll be in business on it. So I'll go ahead and run these things down. All right, buddy, that should All get right. you started. We have the torquing wrench here, Sammy. All right, now we torque these down to 25 foot-pounds. And you can see this little gun had no torque at all, so no. it didn't hurt him. That's the key. You don't want to zap these things down with an impact gun. But that's real could. tempting. Yeah, it is, especially when you got so many of them. But we used a little light one there, just enough to run it down. Now, you want to take this up in a couple of stages, because it's gonna compress a little bit. And then when you got it all the way down, get everything torqued nice and even, and you know you got a good firm grip on it, then you can air up your tire and put it back on. Let me do good, some of that? It? Now I'll go ahead and finish that, but it does look good. It looks great. You gotta take a quick break, stick around. We got a lot more coming here on Motorhead Garage. This edition of Motorhead Garage, presented by ARP, is being brought to you by Max Jacks, the patented one-of-a-kind lifting system, American Car Craft, custom stainless steel accessories, mystery designs, take control of your ride, and by Stage 8, the world's best locking fastener. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, Dave and I got that bead lock tire all put back together, actually put air in it, put it back on the machine, now we're doing a couple other things. Here we got a front differential cover. These differentials were recently serviced. But look at the bolts I'm taking out of this. These are offshore cheap socket head cap screws. These are bad material. Here's what's going to happen to you. First off, they'll break off if they get stuck a little bit. And the reason they'll get stuck is because of the cheap metal they're made out of, especially going into aluminum. Now this goes through an aluminum cover into a cast iron housing. But these things will get galvanic corrosion, between dissimilar metals, it'll give you all kinds of problems. We're gonna install some really nice ARP cap screws. They've got the nice 3-8 head, and then they've got a nice flange on them. And these threads are really nice threads, because this is a 3 8 I'm gonna put a little of the ARP ultra torque. Now, the torque on this cover is not critical, but what the ultra torque is gonna allow us to do is A, get a nice even torque, and B, it's good practice. Also, keep these things from sticking in there, Later on, after going through mud and water and all the things these things go through, you want to service it, they'll come out easily, and you can take your differential cover off. All right, a little bit of ultra torque on these. You don't need a lot. We'll pop this in. I'll do it to all of them. By the way, you notice I didn't take all the bolts out. I didn't need to service it one at a time. I can change them all without losing the fluid. And I'll go ahead and tighten these up. Let's see what Davey's doing at the back of this vehicle. All right, I'm taking these things out. Okay, now I got them out. Now, I'm gonna give you a little tip here. Now, these all came out relatively easy. I was a little surprised, because a lot of times they don't. But take a look at these bolts that they use. These have an Allen socket in the top of them. It's a rounded head like this. What I did is I used a long wrench like this in order to make sure I could break them loose and get them out rather than an impact gun. The reason for that is because sometimes this Allen wrench right here 
can just twist right out of here, booger that hole up, and if that happens, then you're in real trouble because this is all rounded here. You'll never get this thing out. Little tip here for you is when you're doing this and they are hard to get out, take a little bit of valve lapping compound, put it on the end of your Allen wrench, stick it in the hole like so. What this does, gives it a lot of extra grip in there and if you take it easy, you can break these things loose without damaging the head. But then once you get these things out, what I'm doing here is replacing them all with these beautiful ARP fasteners. And as Sam said, you know, these are high tensile strength stainless steel. But the thing I like about it is, see it's got a hex on the end of it. This way, once you get them in, if you ever need to get them out, which you will once in a while, it's easier to get a hold of them and get them out. Now, one of the things I like to do then is put a little bit of lube on here. We'll go ahead and stick these in. Again, I like to get them finger tight, start them like that and then get them torqued and they were in business. And what I did is I just went around here and took one at a time out of there, which made it a lot easier. Didn't have to break that seal. That way, I'm in pretty good shape. How you making out, buddy? I'm doing good, except I thrilled myself with my <laughs> air ratchet. <laughs> you know, this guy, uh, he could use some header bolts. I got some nice ARP header bolts. Yeah. I'm gonna go ahead and start taking these out. I may as well throw him a little bonus. I got the front differential all done. Yeah. And while you're doing that, I can throw some header bolts on here. What do you think? All right. Well, I'm getting these screwed in. These are going in pretty nice. I'll go ahead and tighten these up. Go ahead and torque everything. And this is going to be in good shape. And you go ahead and get those header bolts out. We've run out of time once again. We'll see you again next time here at Motorhead Garage.